how do we define the independent black woman? I'd say, I'll start off by saying she's uh, educated and I think conscious of her situation. She is self-sufficient. Um, she's also, I guess some people might perceive her as being a bit selfish. An independent woman would englobe all of that it takes to be independent as a person. So financial independent, emotional independence, uh, takes conscious of spiritual growth and of self-care. And someone who, whose happiness is not defined by anyone else but herself. I don't share my space. My space is sacred, it's my sanctuary, and um, I choose <laughs> very carefully who comes into my space if somebody comes into my space. Every time I talk about somebody who could enter my space, it's like a, <laughs> it's like a foreign concept. Like, Rosie, you have somebody who you're, you're talking to somebody? And I'm like, yes, I can actually be talking to somebody who actually feel feel emotions and that's another thing too about the independent woman i think that they think that we're deprived of emotion which is not the case at all but i just don't let anyone into my emotional space yeah you can go ahead because mm. i try to share my space you know it's uh um, emphasis on the word try try i try <laughs> i try um, and it's, I don't want to say that it failed. I'm just saying that with the dirt, I can see that there is a, there is a challenge. There is this, um, there is a challenge where, um, these men, don't, they don't know how to be men around me. And as much as sometimes I do give them that opportunity, it's just the conversations are so focused on the fact that that person feels inferior for some reason. Um, so I, I think I try. A uh, couple of months ago, about three months. Talk about your, your, I mean, you guys are very, very strong. You women, you sisters are very strong. But there must be some chink in the armor somewhere. Une faiblesse, uh, un défaut, uh, vulnerability somewhere. Of course. Ha! Yes. And you said it, you said we're strong, and then you said there must be some from Strong, it's not because you have vulnerable beliefs that you're not strong. Actually, on the contrary, when you're able to point them out and say, this is why I'm vulnerable, this is what makes me weak. I have flaws, of course. Where do they come from? They come from this defense mechanism of knowing what good and well that somebody could, you could actually love somebody to the point where they can hurt you. Because as soon, to be able to love honestly and deeply, you have to let go of some power. You have to let go, like, you, you have to be able to be vulnerable with somebody. And knowing that somebody can take that and crush that and use that to their advantage and make you feel like a child when I need to take care of you, I need to be there for you, you can't think by yourself and absolutely dominate every aspect of your life, to me, is just crazy. My problem with vulnerability is sometimes um, I, it clouds my judgment, <laughs> so I avoid it as much as possible. You're giving yourself to that person, right? And knowing that they know all the secrets, cracks and crevices of your personality and how they can use that against you. And, and, and they will, and they some will. Some do. I don't, I don't believe they all do. I don't think they, they will. will. Every time I that think. they don't feel like men, <laughs> they will. No, see, well, that depends on the person. But then again, it's like a, you know, <laughs> there has to be, I think there has to be some, some common ground though. <laughs> <laughs> they will, no, they will, no, no. they I will. Think, Cause I they're think. gonna say, they're gonna tell you things like, oh, you're gonna be by yourself all your life. That's what, that's what they're gonna see, say, I'm telling you. No. feel like, how does the loneliness feel in your lives? Because you are... Saying I'm alone would be so disrespectful to everybody who's in my life. <laughs> Saying well, that the way I'm... how you just like go around <laughs> question Rosie. What you, you know, mean? Oh, it was a yes or no question. No, but okay, no, it... So you don't feel alone, Rosie, sometimes? 
No. I feel alone some, sometimes. You do? Yes, I do. I'm very happy that you're able to admit that. Go. No ego. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm very, wow, wow, wow. In terms of, there's always somebody that you talk to, you know. <laughs> it's just, but I think, um, if, if, if you're talking about like marital status or relationship status, I am alone, but I'm not lonely. There's a no. difference. There's a difference between being alone and lonely. I think solitude. Solitude is a healthy lonely. I think like, if I had to describe the perfect man that I have to be with, he has to be um, emotionally aware of himself, understand, like, at least be able to go through all of his emotions because I know I go through all of my emotions through different ways and they come right back to myself. So like I said, sometimes being vulnerable clouds my judgment, but at a certain point, you know, after a while when I realize, okay, well, this isn't working and I don't know why I got, in, got into this <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> and I'm able to say, okay, no, this really needs to end because I, I cannot. But I always attract the ones who think uh Maybe because they're six You're in feet. need of like protection. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm in need. Um, you, you need to be protected. No, I don't. Or, or the, oh, the, you're gonna change your mind one day. Yeah, I, that, that's that, that's I, that's the ones that I attract. Um, it's almost as if like you know you're broken, so I have to fix you. Like I like how you look on the outside, but you're missing that 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 you know that femininity. So I'll, I'll show you how to be that. Bring back that feminine aspect. And I also attract men who are interested more in being loved than loving. They do need to be loved, but they also need to love back. Like, what is this? <laughs> Where, like, uh, you're not gonna come and suck me dry. And I've seen a lot of these independent women that shape our lives that love, and they love deeply, and they love for a long time. But at the end of their life, they were sucked dry. The reason why I don't let them in personally, I remember when, uh, and this happened like maybe every two years, I was always have one of my aunts who would be doing dishes and she'd be like, you know, if I didn't love this man, I would have had this diploma. I would have had this career. I would have went to travel to this place. And then there's this other one who's like, oh, if I didn't have kids, I would have been this doctor. I would have had this job. Like you missed out on Like love. you missed out because of love or what you thought was, was love, love or deep care, or deep attention. Yeah. She became independent, but it happened like in her 40s or 50s, you know, like it could have happened a lot younger. You have to know the person and know what they value. I had a man scream at me, shout at me, that like I should stop competing with him because I don't, I don't, I don't have a dick. But <laughs> he didn't understand though that maybe the reason why I was adamant and uh, like I was holding on to my position um, in the argument is because I, I actually just wanted to have that that. Um, I wanted to secure my space. I still wanted to defend my, my private space. Um, it's not that I, I will allow you to come in. You have that. You have that opportunity. But still, it's almost as if like it was all or nothing. You have to give me everything, mm -hmm. all of you. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's one day we can get to that point, but not today. That's that's it. You see, for me, I don't think I'll ever get to that point because what happens is that when you give everybody everything, when they leave, they leave with everything too. And that. And you have to keep yeah, you a have part to of yourself. Yeah, you have to gauge how much. You have to much. keep a part of yourself. Because I see a lot of women give everything, and then when he leaves... Yeah, they're just broken. And these are from the women that we grew up with. Yeah. Again, uh, he left with everything. Was your father absent or present during your childhood? What do you mean by present? Well, was he, <laughs> was he a present father, or was he... I know he... who he is. Um, <laughs> I... My father was present, because when we talk about presence, we have to be able to... Was he a father to you? Oof, that's a tough question. Financially, okay. he was a father. Emotionally, he was just a symbolic presence. I didn't have my father. I had, my mother is my father. Um, I had a stepfather who I can say is father figure, um, but there, I think there's always that, that distance between um, that unconditional love that you feel with your biological parent, if you want to put it that way. Do you see any link with that, with the women that you are today? 
Of course. I think the foundation of who you are comes from family, from your first uh, experiences that you have with love or what you think is love. I think, yeah, there is a, there is a direct link. And, um, and, I, and I think it's still, I don't want to say the trauma, but I think that um, that absence still kind of manifests in, it comes out in different, um, comes out in different ways, especially when it comes on to the, uh, my selection in men. I will have kids. I don't, um, no matter the way uh, artificial insemination, adoption, whatever the, the, the way is, I will have kids. So your future daughter doesn't need a father? She needs a father figure. Okay. So uncles and cousins and I can have all these people have a testosterone around my child. <laughs> but... <laughs> what you're saying is you just go to the death and get a bag of testosterone. No, no. With a man and a soul. Don't uh, you find? Yeah, yes, it's optimal, but is it necessary? That's the difference. It's optimal. The father is optimal. And I pray to whatever force that there is out there that I can find somebody to be around my daughter and a good and worthy father. And ultimately, what a child needs to be raised is love, a loving environment. Yeah, safe. Yes, yeah, safe, loving environment. Engaging. Engaging and to help the rest them. they will figure out through their journey. And you, you can, you know, you can choose your father. Some people are stuck with one. You can choose whoever you want as a daddy. It's not, it's not as simple as that. I, I, I'm maybe I'm projecting my own, my own void. So I feel like I need, I would like to have, um, to have a child within a relationship. I would like to do that. I'd like to have a child within a relationship. Um, and if we stay together, if we separate, well, then at that point, that's where co-parenting comes into play. Because with this dichotomous thinking that we have where females are emotional and can't think for themselves and can't be by themselves, so you have the male as the independent and the woman as the dependent. Now, if we try to reshape that thought that is around this uh, concept of masculinity and femininity, we can have partners who balance out each other, you know, it doesn't have to be where I need to be dependent on you so you can feel more like a man and I can feel more like a female. I can be a female and still be independent and still love you and still want you in my life. I think the independent woman like calls into question masculinity as well because, I mean, traditionally, even still today, um, women are, men are always active, women are passive. That's just how it's been constructed from the dawn of time. So, um, but now women are active, but men still have this belief that they should be passive. This is where um, uh, independent woman, yes, just, we're talking about the woman, but it's also in relation to the man where masculinity, there, there's, we're, we're, we are basically challenging masculinity.